no rational human being would shut down Bagram Airfield and abandon it before attempting an extract from an entire nation. Like that's just beyond stupid. It is so stupid. The only thing I can say is it must have been intentional. It is an introduction of chaos into life. And I, I don't know that Joe Biden himself is even aware of these decisions were made, but the people that work for him were. Joining me today is United States Marine Corps veteran Kevin Nicholson. He is also the founder and president of No Better Friend Corp. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. Happy Veterans Day and thank you so much for your service. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, when we previously spoke, um, it was in the days after the fall of Afghanistan and the Taliban takeover. Obviously, this is our first Veterans Day uh, since we lost the war in Afghanistan. Now, as someone who served in Afghanistan as well as Iraq, how is this day different than previous years? Well, just take a moment back to reflect. It's incredibly frustrating when you see an effort that that you and uh, brothers and sisters in arms have poured blood into quite literally, um, thrown away in the way that it was by the Biden administration. And by no means am I excusing like the 20 years prior in Afghanistan, where again, I think you and I have talked about this. I, I feel very strongly that we didn't have a clear strategic objective, but that does not, those previous mistakes and all the different members of Congress that rolled through Washington over that time and didn't demand that we have a clear strategic objective in Afghanistan does not excuse what the Biden administration did, which was in essence to, to one, completely throw the entire effort um, under the bus, and then also to basically sacrifice the member, excuse me, U.S. service members' lives who were actually killed in an attack, which was completely unnecessary. And there I'm talking about the 11 Marines, the sailor and the soldier that were killed in what was an incredibly poorly thought out extract, which included the Biden administration actually abandoning Bagram Airfield mm -hmm. before they tried to evacuate the country, which makes no sense because that was a military controlled point of entry and exit that they abandoned before they tried to conduct an extract. Again, totally nonsensical. And then a big part of this, and I just wrote a piece about this in RCP, is, um, you know, our experience in the military is that like every little piece of gear matters, serialized gear, losing it and not being accountable for it can actually cost you your career. That's the way the military operates. And it doesn't have to be a rifle, although it would be a rifle. It can be a pair of night vision goggles. You lose it and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And what I juxtapose in that real clear politics piece is that standard that we were held to in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam and, and World War II, Compare that to the fact that the Biden administration literally left behind hundreds of billions of dollars worth of military material and weaponry from, again, uh, Black Hawk helicopters to machine guns to vehicles just handed over to the enemy. And if you're going to compare those two things, it is jarring to those of us who have served to see the blase approach of the Biden administration and then their subsequent attempt to try and cover it all up. I'm glad you brought up your piece for Real Clear Politics because the first line that you write about is how less than 10% of the current U.S. population has served in the armed forces. Uh, this statistic was so shocking to me um, as I have family members who have served um, in the armed forces. What do you think is the contributing factor or factors to this number? Well, part of it is uh, just just the reality of the wars that we fought. Like, so for example, coming out of World War II, broad scale mobilization of the U.S. population, the draft that existed for many years uh, during the war, and then thereafter that that you had compulsory service that just simply upped the numbers, and then our transition to an all volunteer force, which I think most people actually that serve in the all volunteer force strongly believe it should be that way. We want to fight with people that want to be there. And also too, the force is more or less scaled to the size of the combat operations we've had more recently in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now that said, there's an important step back here. I think we need to admit that we have leaned extremely heavily on our National Guard and our reserves in terms of deployments, and I mean deployments to combat zones that were likely not intended when those institutions were set up the way that they were. It's put an incredible, incredible burden on the families in the National Guard units around our country uh, to have to deploy in the manner that they have. And then to train to meet those standards as well too, takes it just puts a huge burden on their families. So again, if you look at the way our force is structured, more or less it is in line with like the size of the military engagements that we've had. But it, it, saying that for what it is, what it does mean is what you're getting to, which is that we have a lower percentage of the U.S. population that has served in the military, 
which means there's less people that have those kind of connections that you talked about that your family has uh, to the military. And a couple things come from that that I think are important to reflect on on Veterans Day. One is that the American people have less of a direct uh, understanding of what it means to deploy to, com to combat operations and to fight for the US military. And they don't always understand like what kind of support veterans and, and active duty really do need in order to be successful at what we're trying to do. And this is where I get back to, we need a clear mission. <laughs> you know, it's it's not enough for politicians to show up at, at, at you know, goodbye ceremonies and wish, wish us the best or to show up to do helicopter rides uh, in Afghanistan so they get a cool photo op of themselves. What we really do expect of them is that they will actually like demand of those in Washington in particular that they have a clear mission when they deploy us such that the American people and those being deployed understand it. Likewise too, we expect that politicians understand enough to know that when the Biden administration is going down the route that they were in Afghanistan, that the brakes had to be pumped hard to say what on earth is happening? The moment that Bagram Airfield was was vacated in the middle of the night with no explanation to our allies, there should have been brakes being pumped all over Washington, D.C. to say, Joe Biden, what are you doing? Like, what is happening here? What is your plan? That didn't happen the way that it should have. And likewise, too, I have a lot of frustration with generals who weren't saying this plan is unworkable. It's going to end up in the loss of American and local national life, let alone turning over potentially billions upon billions of dollars of material to our enemy. And so that's what i worry about the, the numbers are what they are in terms of who served and, and such and who's got this experience and insight but that's why those of us who have served i think have an obligation to speak up to say look this is our experience like we don't even get to lose night vision goggles we don't lose uh, i wrote that real clear politics piece about like a pec 2 which is something that attaches to our rifle and allows us to see where our, our weapon is is pointed through our night vision goggles you don't get to lose those things in the battlefield even you go and retrieve them so how is it that our politicians like Joe Biden, Tony Blinken can hand over arsenals to the enemy and ultimately face no repercussions? We need more Americans to understand how absurd that is. Yes, and it makes me think like if we do continue to see this declining percentage of the American population not serving, what effect could that have on our country's patriotism or our, our civil life? Like what what could be the the long term impacts of this number? Well, again, it, this is why I think it is important for veterans, many of whom serve, do their part, and then move on with their life to the next step, which is great. I do urge them to speak up and talk about their experiences, not to draw attention to themselves necessarily, but again, to kind of have the conversation we're having here about, hey, this is the way it really works. These are the things that we face when we, when we go to combat operations. These are the standards we're held to. This is why it's important that our politicians and elected officials both understand that and act in accord with it, which gets to your point, like how do we say we have a lower percentage of Americans who've served in the military, how do we counteract that? It's by veterans speaking up and sharing their, their perspective. And then to, to all the American people, what I'd say is this, like, again, we're not asking that, you know, Americans recognize every single veteran as being a hero every single day of the year, but do understand the sacrifice that the families make that 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 are involved in the United States military in one way, shape or form. Tons of sacrifice around moving across the country and at every stage of your career progresses. Tons of sacrifice around deployments and like the stress that puts on family. I mentioned the guard units and the reserve units that get pulled out of daily life to go train and then potentially deploy. That is a huge burden. And as we think about you know, what public acts of service really are, um, those are real acts of service and we should appreciate it. And we should understand in context, what do they ask for in return? Again, clarity and mission, respect for the job that's being done and to ultimately be led and ordered by people that are respectable. My argument would be that Joe Biden isn't and he's proven it over and over again. Well, just speaking of, of Joe Biden, do you have a message for our commander in chief beyond what you've already talked about uh, previously? Well, uh, what I wrote in the piece is, is what I really think you should do is like save us the speeches and the empty gestures, right? Like I think everyone gets the premium he does not place on the importance of safeguarding the lives of those that are deployed. He showed it in Afghanistan. Again, I'm gonna be as tactical and real as I can be, and I invite anyone from the left to come in and argue with me on this. No rational human being would shut down Bagram Airfield and abandon it before attempting an extract from an entire nation. Like, that's just beyond stupid. It is so stupid. The only thing I can say is it must have been intentional. 
it is an introduction of chaos into life. And I, I don't know that Joe Biden himself is even aware of these decisions were made, but the people that work for him were. And ultimately, it's reprehensible that it happened. So save us the speeches and the empty gestures that he probably has planned for Veterans Day. And instead, how about he focuses his time today? Give it a few hours on trying to recoup and recover the, again, helicopters, the machine guns, the vehicles, the countless rounds of ammunition that were all handed over to a Taliban government and ISIS-K in, in various formats that has full intent to kill Americans when they have the opportunity to do so. That would be a better use of his Veterans Day uh, than giving acting speeches and pretending like he cares.